the Nashville Predators came back from a three to one deficit against the Winnipeg Jets to get the game to overtime and clinch a playoff spot. And the hero of the game didn't score a goal or record an assist. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. want to start off this Wednesday post-game episode the way we start off all of our episodes, and that is with a shout out to our Locked On Pred Heads. Those are our everyday listeners who tune in to talk Nashville Predators hockey with us Monday through Friday. We appreciate your support, and we love that we get to spend just a little bit of your day with you. I'm Ann Kimmel. I am a writer at Penalty Box Radio. I am usually joined by my partner in crime, Nick Morgan, but Nick is off today. What a night, my friends, in Smashville last night. Although the Predators did lose in overtime to the Winnipeg Jets, it's hard to wake up and feel terribly discouraged this morning because the Preds got the one point they needed to punch their ticket to the postseason. So on today's show, we are going to recap last night's contest, including our one word to describe the overtime game. I'm going to tell you who the absolute hero of the game was, and it may surprise you. And we're going to take a quick look around the Western Conference to see where things stand when it comes to the playoff picture as well. So a ton to dive into on today's episode. But before we jump into everything, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Nashville Predators lost in overtime by a score of 4-3 to three to the Winnipeg Jets, but friends, it does not feel like a morning after loss. So we're going to kick off our recap with one word. My one word is bring it on. And I mean it in the saying way, bring it on. And I'm talking about the playoffs because Nashville has clinched their spot to make the postseason. But I'm also referring to the absolute hit movie, Bring It On, starring Kirsten Dunst and Gabrielle Union. This is a movie set in high school about two rival cheer teams Kirsten Dunst and Gabrielle Union play the captains of these rival school cheerleading squads. And it turns out that Dunst's Toros team, their former captain, stole cheer routines from another high school program, cheerleading program led by Gabrielle Union, the Clovers. So a lot happens. It's a high school movie, friends. You know, there's drama and relationships and this, that, and the other thing. But in the end, what happens is the Toros realize that they have to do the right thing. They put together their own truly unique original routine and they compete against the Clovers. Now, the Clovers go on to win the competition, but the Toros take second and they end up feeling good about themselves and what they've learned and they appreciate the talent that they have on their team. No, Nashville didn't win the game. They came in second at the cheerleading competition, but They learned a lot about themselves over the course of this game, and they have set themselves up to be in a really good place for the sequel, the postseason. In case you missed last night's game at Bridgestone Arena, let's walk through a real quick 30-second recap, and then we're going to talk about the takeaways from this game. First period started off well with Tommy Novak getting the Preds on the board first with a goal at 4.05, a penalty by Michael McGarrett. Michael McCarron resulted in a power play goal by Velarde to tie the game up less than two minutes later. There was a turnover in the defensive zone that gave Mark Shifley a goal. And then Morgan Barron found Dylan DeMello in the slot 
and Winnipeg wrapped up the first period with a three to one lead. Second period was much cleaner for the Nashville Predators. They outshot the Jets 20 to five, but they just could not get anything past Hellebuck. The game remained 3 1 after 40 minutes. Less than two minutes into the third period, Michael McCarron and Logan Stanley dropped the gloves. Michael McCarron knocked Logan Stanley down with a right hook, and then McCarron absolutely lost his mind as he headed to the penalty box, kind of raising his arms to the crowd on the bench and yelling, let's go, with more descriptive words than I'm allowed to say on the podcast. And that, my friends, was your pivot point in this game and your game hero right there, Michael McCarron. Nashville took the challenge from McCarron, amped it up even more, and at 7.34, Spencer Stasny scored to make it a one-goal game. Just over two minutes later in the third period, Ryan O'Reilly scored to tie this game up. Nashville kept pushing and shooting and fighting and battling, and they got this game to overtime to get the one point they needed for that postseason lock. Nashville had a couple of good chances in overtime, but noted Preds killer, Kyle Connor scored to win the game for the Winnipeg Jets in overtime. So looking at this game last night, what are kind of the big takeaways that we need to spend a minute talking about? I think the first thing we have to talk about is a tough start. Yes, Tommy Novak got the Preds on the board first, but Winnipeg was able to capitalize on Nashville's mistakes in that first period. And it is very difficult to go down three to one against a team like the Winnipeg Jets because they have Connor Hellebuck in goal. When the goaltender you're facing has a season average 920 save percentage and he plays like that walrus in net on the progressive commercial, it is very difficult to come back from a two goal deficit. So it was a bit of a tough start for the Nashville Predators in just moments. Like overall in that first period, the Predators outplayed the Jets, but again, little mistakes were capitalized on by the Jets. One of the words that we've heard consistently talked about with this team, and and we've seen the hats, we know the swag, we've heard the word relentless, but I think the word for last night was just resiliency. You know, the Predators fans sat and watched that amazing comeback against the Vegas Golden Knights. And I think everybody in Bridgestone Arena was like, can can we do this again? You know, can we do this again? No, Nashville didn't get the fairy tale ending quite this time. They did lose in overtime, but they got the point they needed for the playoffs. And what was really exciting is that this is a team that I don't think doubted their ability to come back in this game. And and let's be honest, with Connor Hellebuck in that, I had my moments of like, can they really do this? We got to hear a post game from Andrew Burnett about just this team's play, their identity, their resiliency. And Michael McCarron also shared his thoughts about this team and just the mindset of this team. This is what they had to say. It's growing moments that we've kind of gone through. I think we've talked a lot about during the year, um, about the growth of the group, um, the confidence of the group, the pride that they carry in being relentless and and how they're priding themselves on the identity. And they built it, not me, they built the identity. And, And they... You know what the word is. They said a million times is just the word. It's what they do night in and night out, and I think they're wearing it very proud, um, and they're bringing it every night. And the process that we're going through, it, it it's been you know, on top of our game, and we got to keep building our game. It's going to get harder and harder, but we've seemed to relish in in the hardness of of games and and big moments. Never been on a team that that doesn't quit till the till the end of the game, and it's pretty special. It's. Uh something you don't really ever see. I've been on a lot of teams in my career and uh, I haven't been on a team that, that fights to the end like this. So it's pretty, it's a pretty special group and um, it was good, good to get that point tonight. Definitely feels good that we're headed to the playoffs. I love hearing Michael McCarron talk about that. You know, this is a team that's going to fight till the end. They just don't give up. They don't have quit in them. I think it's interesting to you to hear Andrew Brunette's 
perspective on that because he talks about this is a team that likes to do things the hard way. And, you know, he had talked about that early in the season where the team was struggling, like they would put some things together, but they couldn't kind of put the whole game together. And Brunette would talk about like, they, they are going to have to learn the lessons the hard way. Like we're learning lessons the hard way. We're not just getting the lessons by hearing them. We're having to learn it the hard way. This is a team that has done this the hard way. This is a team that made the postseason the hard way. Um, and, and I think it speaks a lot to the character of the team in the locker room. You know, people don't usually typically air, you know, dirty laundry from a locker room, but you know, you pretty much can pick up a vibe or word maybe kind of leaks out or you can kind of tell this is a locker room like the the vibe in the locker room the vibe among the team it's just one team it's one group and they really fight for each other and they really all have bought in and they're all on the same page and I think you see what a difference that makes in a game like last night where they come from behind and and find a way to accomplish a goal so I think that's really important to give the team and to give Andrew Burnett and Barry Trotz credit for creating a culture and an environment that just really has grown that type of perspective. We do have to talk about the power play and power play conversations have not been delightful as of late. Power play went 0 for 4 last night. Not terrific, but I do want to point out a couple of like positives from the power play. Predators did have 11 shots on goal on the power play. So they were generating chances. They were able to get in and get set up. The one thing I noticed is they did a lot of moving the puck around the perimeter. And I miss the power play days where you stuck big old Ryan O'Reilly or strong Philip Forsberg right in front of the net or in the low slot. And you just kind of got the pucks into them and, and they could kind of clean up that puck for goals. Here's what's real. If Connor Hellebuck can see the puck, he's going to save the puck. So it was going to be tricky to get a power play goal on Connor Hellebuck. But this is one of those things where, you know, you've got to be able to convert on special teams. Not a terrible looking night. Just didn't get the results that you really wanted from the power play. Coming up, we are going to talk a little bit more about Michael McCarron's game-changing fight, a topic, you know, that I didn't realize I was going to be discussing on this episode, but here we are. First, though, I want to let you know this episode is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. So join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Once more, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Nashville Predators will have a few days off before they take the ice once again Friday and Saturday for their last back-to-back -back of the regular season. We're going to preview those games later on this week, and we also will be playing a fun game of takes from a hat as well later on this week. So make sure you stay tuned here at Locked on Preds. Today, of course, we are recapping and breaking down the Predators 4-3 overtime loss. We are also celebrating that one point the team earned that guarantees their spot in the playoffs. I do want to talk about two players specifically who I think deserve just a little bit of extra attention after their performances last night. And these are, you know, players who 
maybe haven't uh, been big on the score sheet necessarily lately or who are overlooked. But I do want to give a shout out to Spencer Stasny to start with. The goal by Spencer Stasny in the third period when the Predators were down three to one, that was huge. First of all, I want to say how completely nonchalant Spencer Stasny seemed about scoring that goal on Connor Hellebuck. He was like, eh, okay, goal went in. Like no big selly, no big nothing, just like, hey, scored a goal. But it was such a big goal because it was that moment where you kind of get that second goal for Nashville. You get that puck past Hellebook and you say, okay, if we can get one, we could get two. And I think it definitely helped the Predators fuel that fire. And this is what is real. If if you listen to Locked On Preds, you're going to know that this is a truth bomb getting ready to drop. But I am at least, at minimum, the vice president of the Spencer Stasny is a great hockey player club. Um, so I loved being able to see him score last night in a clutch moment. You know, Stasny does so many little things as well that I think are easily overlooked. And it's not necessarily been an easy season for him. He has only played 17 NHL games this season for the Preds. He was called up. He played in November and December, did very well, but headed back to Milwaukee, was called back up. He dealt with an injury and missed some games. He's now kind of getting back in the lineup, getting into the flow of the game. And again, this is a young player who does so many things really, really well for just kind of getting enough um, NHL experience under his belt. You know, of course, we talk about his skating and we talk about his speed because those are the things that are dramatically noticeable when Stasny is on the ice. But he does so many little things well. You know, this is somebody who blocks shots. He plays smart defense. He understands the pace of the game. He understands when to get involved in the play and kind of drop down in like he did when he scored the goal. He also understands when he needs to kind of hang back and be that responsible defenseman. So he just has a, a great defensive IQ as well as that speed and that skating. And so I loved seeing him score that goal last night. Absolutely hated that he was the defender caught on the ice in overtime on that two on one. That part stinks. But I, I just think again, like, Spencer Stasny, there is something really, really valuable here for the Nashville Predators down the road and love seeing him get that goal for the Predators. We have to talk about Luke Evangelista. Now, a fun topic on all accounts, pretty much all the time. He played 18, over 18 and a half minutes last night. That um, That's one of his highs, uh, time on ice over the season. The most he played was almost 20 minutes. Coincidentally, was against Winnipeg on November 9th. Luke Evangelista had 10 shots on goal last night. He, of course, ended up with the highest individual expected goals for uh, with anybody else on the Predators team, when you're throwing 10 shots on, you know, the stats are going to reflect that. But these were quality chances that Luke Evangelista was trying to get past Hellebuck. And, and I know that he was frustrated that he couldn't get them past Hellebuck, but he just was generating chances. Every second that Evangelista was on the ice, you were watching him because he was doing something. He was pestering the Jets. He was creating chances. He was fighting for the puck. And it was just an exciting game to really see the growth of Luke Evangelista over the course of the season. In the post game, Andrew Burnett, of course, talked about Evangelista's play in this game. We also heard from pretty boy Vincenzo himself on the game. This is what the two of them had to say. Yeah, I mean, he had good mojo tonight. I mean, he's been really good down the stretch. Um, and tonight he had it going on and he, his skill came out. And again, we were talking about this morning, you know, when you put the work in and you skate like he's been skating, you're going to get the puck more. When you have the puck more, your skill will come out. And it was a great, it showed tonight. I thought he was on top of pucks and he was in Jersey the other night and the island and his skill takes over when he's on top of things. Yeah, no, yeah, he's, uh, he's obviously making plays. He always does. So, um, a little bit snake bit right now, as 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 am I and uh, our whole line. So, um, you know, we're just working working to get the get get shots, create chances. We've been creating a lot of chances, just uh, waiting for the floodgates to open for him and for me. So, uh, 
he did a great job. I mean, just just getting the scoring areas a lot, and you know, credit to uh, the rest of the team. They were they were giving me all the chances in the world to bury one. So, um, yeah, I mean, just guys finding me, being in the right spots, just you know, using my shot a little bit more, um, all that kind of stuff, kind of factored into that. I had a chance to talk with Luke Evangelista uh, at morning skate before the game yesterday, and um, asked talk to Bruno about Evangelista as well, and. One of the questions I asked Luke was like, you know, we always hear about what the veterans, you know, contribute to you young players. What do you young players bring to the veterans? And I thought it was really fun. He talked about like, I hope we bring energy. I hope we bring fun. I hope we bring enthusiasm. And and again, he went on to talk about like this locker room, this group, this is a special group where the young players don't feel looked down on by the veterans and everybody is building off of what each player brings. And I just thought that was a really neat perspective and it's such a great experience for these younger players on Nashville's team that that is the culture in the locker room for them. Asked Andrew Brunette a little bit about Luke Evangelista and, and what he's seen change for him over the course of the season. And I don't have video of this, but I do want to read you the quote from Bruno when he was talking about Evangelista. This is what Bruno said. He said, I think early in the year, he was really good early. And then like a lot of young players in this league, it's hard. It's the hardest league in the world and probably had a little bit of a letdown and had trouble finding his game. It took him a little while to get through. I don't think he completely understood how much work goes into it to play at a certain pace that we need him to play at. So I think he figured that out and he's skating as good as he skated all year. He's always had moxie and swagger, but I think he wasn't having the puck as much. And I think he's figured out if he puts the work in, you'll get the puck and the skill will take over. Like great words from Andrew Brunette about just the lessons that Evangelista has learned and in what his hard work is going to result in. This is something I think that we just kind of want to file away for the postseason. The way that Evangelista is playing, you know, didn't get goals tonight, but the, just the hunger that he's playing with, the determination, the high level that he's playing with, the work that he's putting in, the consistency that we're seeing from him. I think Luke Evangelista could be an X factor in the postseason. So let's just put a pin in that and see what happens. But I, I'm willing to say that Evangelista may surprise some some players and in some teams and maybe the league with a postseason performance. Of course, we have to talk about Michael McCarron and that huge fight at the beginning of the third period. And I want to preface all of this by saying I am not an advocate of fighting in hockey. Uh, I'm not a fan of the idea that you want to fight to change momentum in the game. Frankly, my friends, what you, what you want to change the momentum in a game is a goal. Um, but McCarron has me eating a little bit of crow this morning about this. Logan Stanley and Michael McCarron dropped the gloves. And look, here's what's real. Logan Stanley has a little spot in my invisible backpack of hockey grudges. Because last season, Alexander Carrier ended up fighting Logan Stanley, 6'7", Logan Stanley. Logan Stanley is taller than Michael McCarron, y'all. And he fought Alexander Carrier. Carrier stood up for Cody Glass after Stanley had a hit on Glass. Carrier ended up injured. So he lives in my invisible backpack of hockey grudges. I remember these things. Logan Stanley and Michael McCarron dropped the gloves. 157 inches of fight going on there, my friends. Two giants. Like it was the movie poster for Peter Jackson's The Two Towers from Lord of the Rings. Like just the two of these guys standing there. It was insane. Here's what I will say. Again, not a huge fan of fighting. I know it's something that McCarron will do at times, but there is something really special about Michael McCarron. Michael McCarron is that player who kind of, I think, is born with that um, instinctive protector personality. Like if you are his people, he is loyal and he is a protector. And that, you know, you see that extend to his teammates and they love McCarron in the locker room. Andrew Brunette loves McCarron. And it's not about the fighting. It's not about the drop in the gloves. It's just about the way that he 
just protects and stands up for and brings energy to his teammates. Not too long ago, Nashville Predators fans, there was definitely a subsection of Predators fans who did not like that Michael McCarron made the lineup. And McCarron has found a way to win over this entire fan base. And, and he showed how last night, dropping the gloves and then just his response, like drawing the fans in, firing up the team and just pivoting that game right there. He has a career high in goals, assists, points, game winning goals. Like this is Michael McCarron's year. So we asked in the locker room after the game, like, hey, what's the take on McCarron's big brawl? We heard from McCarron himself and some of his teammates as well. This is what they had to say. I knew I knew we'd, we'd been pressing. We had tons of shots on that and just needed something from from something. I don't know. I was I was just I was just really excited after the fight. Obviously, it went my way. Uh, those can obviously go the other way a lot as well. So uh, I knew I was going to get the crowd into it. And I don't normally celebrate like that. But, uh, you know, I felt I felt it needed. The crowd needed it tonight and might have jump started us uh, to get in uh, tie in that game there. He's pretty big. Yeah, I don't know. I think he was he was I don't know. He was worried about my other arm, I think. And I don't think he knew that I had my footing at the time and I was able to catch him. I mean, that's the way fights happen, man. Like I could easily have gone the other way, but it went it went my way tonight and it went our team's way and we were able to tie it up. So it was good. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a cool one to watch for sure. Uh, I've seen him. Uh, I've seen him fight a few times. That was probably one of uh, one of my favorites from him is uh, pretty electric for sure. Yeah, you, you can just feel it in, in you know, in the atmosphere the, the fans love it. We love it on the bench. He was fired up. Um, you know, he's been doing that for all, us all year, whether it's, you know, just, you know, a big fight like that or maybe a big hit, a big shift, um, anything that that line and him and him in particular, he's uh, he's gotten a bunch of energy for us uh, and been a positive impact all, all season. So, uh, yeah, we're lucky to have him. That was awesome. You know, it's you know, it's been so impressive all year, the things he's done. You know, scoring big goals for us, coming out and being heavy, finishing every check, and then stepping up, fighting like that. He's a guy that just does everything, and a heart and soul guy of our team. And that, uh, yeah, you tell that got the crowd into it. That was a huge, huge momentum shift for us. So it was, it was amazing. I love that heart and soul of the team. That's what Ryan O'Reilly has to say about Michael McCarron. So big night for Michael McCarron. I think he was the hero of the game. Coming up, we're going to talk about just sort of some takeaways from this game as we look ahead to the playoffs. What do the Predators need to focus on? And we are also going to take a peek around the Western Conference for Western Conference Wednesday. After a slew of hockey games yesterday, where do the Predators stand right now? First, though, want to let you know today's episode's brought to you by Game Time. There is, of course, just one Predators home game left. And if you're looking to see the action in Smashville, or maybe you're looking to find a great comedy show, or, you know, you'd like to head to the ballpark and catch an MLB game, you need to download the Game Time app. Game Time has killer last minute deals. They have all in prices, views from your seat, and they have a lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time has tickets available right now for things like Nashville Sounds Games, Vanderbilt Baseball, comedian Bert Kreischer is going to be in Clarksville. They have tickets for that one. And country music star Tim McGraw will be at Bridgestone Arena. All of those can be found on the Game Time app. And friends, the process to get your tickets is so easy. Two clicks and your tickets are sent right to your phone and you are ready to go. And friends, if you are a last minute planner, like me, you're going to love Game Time's last minute deals where you can save up to 60% off for sports, concerts, comedy, or theater. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Term supply. Again, download the Game Time app, create an account, and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. So Preds, again, lost last night, 4-3 in overtime, but a big game. Predators got the point they needed to lock up a spot in the postseason. So what lessons can we take from last night's game and carry over into the postseason? Real quick overview, I would say this. 
It was another game where the advanced stats battle was won by the Nashville Predators, but they weren't able to finish it and get those two points. Predators uh, had the advantage in expected goals for they had 15 to eight high danger chance advantage. Corsi four percentage, which sort of gauges puck possession. Nashville had 64% on that. So you want to perform at that type of level, but you want to be able to finish. They did run into a hot goaltender. I know y'all hate hearing that, but friends, it's just what's true. But here's the thing. In the postseason, all the goaltenders are hot. No cold goaltenders really show up in the postseason. So they're going to have to find a way to finish on all of these chances that they're creating. Another lesson for the postseason: little mistakes can be big game changers. The early mistakes that Winnipeg converted on cost Nashville this game. And here's what's real. The teams that you're going to meet in the postseason are going to be the teams that know how to convert on mistakes. So got to clean some things up. You know, it's one of those things where last night we learned that the Nashville Predators are a team that can compete with a playoff team like Winnipeg, with the talent and the goaltending with Winnipeg. You can even outplay them. I mean, Nashville outplayed them statistically, but there are still areas where Nashville's going to need to improve to win in the postseason. And friends, they are down to three games left in the season to kind of Get those little mistakes under control and make those little corrections. So still a little bit of work for the Nashville Predators to do. Again, don't know whether they're going to opt to rest some of the stars, whether they're going to push through and try to get um, some more chemistry, some more momentum for the team. It'll be interesting to see the decisions Andrew Brunette makes when it comes to Kevin Lankinen and UC Saros as well. Last night's action around the Western Conference, little bit of changes. I think the biggest game is that the Anaheim Ducks defeated the LA Kings. So what does this sort of mean? Well, the Kings, um, the Kings are in the third um, Pacific spot, the third spot in the Pacific Division, but huge game coming up tonight that we want to keep our eye on. And that is the game between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights tonight. So let's keep an eye on this game right now. The Oilers have 99 points, but my friends, they have six games left to play as opposed to Vancouver, who has the number one spot in the Pacific. They only have four games remaining. Um, and so there's only a five point difference there. So keep an eye on this because there is a scenario where the Edmonton Oilers and Nashville Predators could meet in this first round of the playoffs. I think that's going to be really interesting if Instead, Vegas wins tonight over the Edmonton Oilers. Then Vegas is going to bump L.A. out of that third spot in the Pacific. And the L.A. Kings are going to land behind the Preds in that second wild card spot with their 93 points. Currently, the Preds have 95 points. So there is still a lot of shifting that is happening in the Western Conference. Keep an eye on the games tonight. They're going to have an impact on maybe where things land. Of course, the Predators, they still have plenty of work to do. They have a game Friday and Saturday and another game next week to wrap up their season. We're here at Locked on Preds are going to have you covered for all of that action. So make sure that you tune in right here. That is going to do it for today's episode of the Locked on Predators podcast. Hey, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Hope you have a fabulous Wednesday and we will be back tomorrow with an all new episode all about what's happening with those Nashville Preds. We'll see you then.